Hi there! Isn't it about time I made some proper foundry tools? I think so. Alright, here's the plan. There are three main tools that I don't have that I want to make. I need a draw scooper for one, I need crucible tongs for two, and three, a degasser, a thing to like plunge the degas mix in and move it around and all that jazz. And I'm going to make all three today and it's very simple. To get it accomplished, I have a piece of angle here. It is eighth inch by three quarter by three feet, purchased at the hardware store. You can get small sizes of uh, steel at hardware stores usually, and you uh, have the luxury of just buying one small piece at uh, triple or quadruple price of a normal steel yard. I also got this. This is 3 8 by 6 feet rod. Just a round rod. Now these are both weldable. They're called weldable steel, and what that means is they're not galvanized. So if you weld it, you don't die from zinc fumes. So that's, that's nice. I also have some scrap steel from the Jeep project. I've been working on that a lot lately, video eventually, who knows. So we're gonna use just these couple of things to make all three of those tools, okay? Well, no, that's, that's a lie. I have this too. A candy cane, just kidding. This is a 3 16th by 3 quarter by 3 feet piece. I bent it off camera. This is for the crucible tongs. I'll, I'll, I'll show you later. Or I'll show you now. So how I bent this is a uh, stay I took from the straight end. I pulled the vise in so there was, there was a little bit of slack but not much. And I would put it in, bend with manly strength, slide a little more, bend a little more, and that would give me a nice round thing. Then I would compare on the top. Yeah, and I got about the right curve around about as far as I wanted. And what this allows me to do, uh, this obviously isn't complete, but the idea is, you know, there you go, it's holding it. You can like angle it to pour and it doesn't fall out and uh, you know, all that fun stuff. See, I have it more than 90 degrees tipped and it's not falling out. So that's the plan. I'm just going to cut it off. Uh, this is kind of copying the idea of, uh, there's a YouTube channel somewhere, I forget the name, it's pretty popular, he dumps molten copper on stuff. I don't really condone dumping copper on things, it's kind of dangerous, but he has a one piece like crucible tong pourer thing that I think I can adapt and make it here nice and easily. So this kind of wraps a little more than halfway around, uh, but it will allow, once this is cut off, these clamps will slip under the bottom and when I lift up, see it's kind of tapered thicker as it goes up, then it'll grab up near the top. So, and, and it grabs, you know, up higher to the top than halfway. So most of the weight's down here. That's what allows me to tip it so far without it falling out. But anyway, got it bent. I'll probably clean it up with a grinder and now I'm going to cut it off at my Sharpie mark. Even though it's toasty out here today, it's actually pretty nice out. I gotta wear all this leather because those sparks hurt. They burn, they burn the skin. Good, good. Now the idea is weld it on there and I'll have this straight tongs. Now the problem is I can't just do this and slide it in and pick it up even though that would be handy because uh, the, the furnace wall will be further away than this. So I gotta bend this to uh, achieve that goal. That's uh, too hot for all this leather. It's not even that hot if I'm honest. It's like 75 but I'm used to like 20 right now so 75 feels like a desert. See same deal. Slide it in. Now I'm gonna give it quite a large bend here. Yeah. Ooh, what you can't feel is this is nice and toasty from cutting it. Then I'm going to give it kind of a reverse bend. There, I think this will work. So now if it's welded on here, I'll be able to do this, tip it, lower it down and around, and then pick up. And I'll never have to be more than like two inches away from the side of the crucible. And there will be space enough for me to do that in the furnace. Good to go. Now we just got to weld it, but I'm going to build the other parts first. Next is the draw scooper, and I think I'm going to use this. I'm going to take a bit of angle iron, a couple feet of this giant pole that's way too long to maneuver, weld it on the bottom, like that, and I'll have like a scoop. So I cut this off like here, and then you know, around the tip edges I'll be able to get it down in the crucible. That's my idea, so let's get marking. Ah, drop the sharpie, jeez. All this dangerous stuff and I screw up with a sharpie? I guess it could be much worse. There, that's probably good enough. And then I'll like grind that kind of thing. Because I don't want these pointy things hitting the end of the crucible and the inside. So I'm going to round the inside a little bit, but still leave a bit of the scoop. I redrew the lines on this side. I couldn't clamp it nicely so that the thing stuck up. 
So, my mistake. And I gotta get all this protective junk back on. If it's any consolation, all this leather makes me look cool. That'll be like a scoop. It's not a very big scoop. It's not a very wide scoop. But the crucible's not very big either. So this'll like, you know, allow me to... I'll have to take multiple grabs, but it'll, it'll be fine. The nice thing about it being so thick is that I will be able to... Uh, if I can't get the dross off, I can just grind this stuff off. And I have a whole bunch of this angle left, you know, this, this whole much. So it won't be a big problem to just whip up another one of these if this ends up getting too screwed up. But it's steel, so I'm not going to be getting it hot enough to really to melt the steel. This next part will be a little different. So the, the degasser is like a little plate, you want it kind of bold and full of holes with the rod coming out, that you can put that little packet of degasser in and plunge it to the bottom and kind of move it around. And the holes will allow it to bubble up through. And we're going to make it from this. This is a cutoff from the fender of the Jeep. Inside of this is probably the right diameter. Close enough. Who needs a compass? Mine's downstairs anyway. Also, it's crap. Snip, snip, snip. You know, at this point, I could mention these snippers, these electric snippers, don't do tight radius corners very well. So this is 20 gauge steel. Uh, I don't know if that's thick enough for it to be really long lasting, but I'm not going to be using it under the metal for very long. It's just going to be in for a few moments during the degassing, and then I'll remove it. I mean, otherwise, I'm just going to throw this metal in the scrap pile anyway, so no big loss if it doesn't work. Speaking of that, then these are going to the scrap pile. Now, to achieve the dome shape, we're going to do something new. Not very new. This is a big leather bag full of playground sand. It's for stretching. I'm going to grab my stretching mallet, which I always say, I, I keep saying, I have to finish this someday, but then I never do. And I'm not going to today. So uh, anyway, here's how it works. You hammer into that. This kind of gives, but it still supports the rest of the metal, and you end up putting big round dents in this thing, uh, like so. Just kind of, you know, bends the crap out of it, but it's stretching, stretching the metal in the center. Want to hit it all over the place. There, now it's kind of lumpy and ugly looking. That's, that's good. We want that. Next unusual tool, a stump, into which I've carved a bowl and then sanded it and burned it, kind of. I'm going to use my high crown hammer and this bowl to try to flatten this out a little bit. Ta-da! And it's formed kind of a dome shape. That's what we want. Goodbye, stump. I'm going to drill holes in this thing. I'm not even going to use my giant drill. I'm just going to use this little one with uh, 5 32nd. A little bigger than a 1 8th. I'm just going to drill a bunch of holes. This bench top's getting all screwed up, so I'm just going to drill straight into it. Why not? Did I say I'm not going to use the big one? I'm going to go get the big one. Now let's try that again, but with a bigger one. Why would I ever use that little one again? Like, it's not even funny how much better this one works. There we go. Bunch of holes. Probably should make sure this fits. Oh yeah, all the way to the bottom. We're good. Now I gotta cut this. I think I'll just go with two feet. Two feet each, and then I'll have two feet left over. Grinder time. There, now we're pretty much good to go. Got a two foot rod, got a groove cut at an angle, so this kind of sits in there nicely, which will facilitate welding, I hope. Another two foot rod. I'm gonna clean all these up with the grinder, the sanding disc probably. And this crucible tong is cut from that single bar. Welded on, right about there, and that'll be my tongs. We'll be good to go. Now I just gotta clean these up and then fire up the welder. Now I should probably clear everything flammable. Alright, I'm gonna start with this. Let's see, how am I gonna do this? I know I have to like clamp it. I think I'll clamp it with this and then do some tacks. There, yeah. Eyeballing it, that looks straight ish. Now maybe up here. Two beads side by side, crappily. Don't think I need this anymore. There we go, see? Those are not as good a welds as I did on the chair. But, you know, they'll, they'll probably work. It's not like they're super vital. 
There, they call that welded. And now the test. <laughs> yep, guess it's good enough. Let that air cool. This, I'm gonna have to come up with some kind of clamping solution. Perhaps this kind. I have this clamped in the vise. I can hold this at the 45 degree angle and tack around. I'll connect the, the whatever electrode to this thing. So I connected the other end of the welder to this, made sure the pole was up in all the copper wiring, and now let's see how this works. Is that holding? It is holding. Okay, okay. Now more welding. I need to get this other side too. There, that is hideous. Quite hideous, but I think it'll hold. Again, time to administer the test. Yep, I think that's holding. Now, the trickiest of them all. What makes this one so tricky? Well, this is thin. That means burn through is possible. That means I got to be real careful, like. Obviously, don't imitate my welding here. All right, speaking of burn through, there's some burn through, but it's holding. And there we have it. I guess this is a pretty thin piece of sheet metal. I got some penetration there, a couple of burn through holes, but I'm supposed to have holes, right? I think. I'm not going to ram this one into the ground because it's thin sheet metal, but I mean, that seems to be holding. It's not going to be load bearing, so it's just going to kind of hold something down in and plunge it around a bit and then pop right back out. If it breaks, eh, I'll just have a little bit of iron in my mix. So there you have it. A degasser, I'm probably going to use this for aluminum primarily. A scooper. And the crucible tongs. Obviously I'm going to bend the top into some kind of handle. I'll have to figure out what, what sort of angle and shapes uh, work later. Okay, here's a demonstration of all the tools in action. Pretend that furnace is going. Obviously I'm going to build the newer furnace, but the inside bore is going to be similar to this one. I can take the draw scooper, scoop out the dross, you know, gather it to one side, scoop it out, knock it off on whatever, into the whatever, uh, then this, this thing's jobs over. Take my little degassing packet wrapped up in the tinfoil, plop it in there, then plunge it to the bottom and move it around so all the gases and stuff percolate up through all those holes to degas it. Then this thing's job is over. Then I can pull this thingy out with that crazy bend and watch this. You want it to be 90 degrees from the pouring spout there on the crucible. Take it, kind of go in, go down, and lift up. Ta-da! And you know, shake it to get it settled. It'll probably settle easier when the thing is hot. Uh, then you can pour it in, pour the stuff into the mold. See, I can, I'm tipping it more than 90 degrees, so it's more upside down than it is right side up. And then done. You can take it off in the thing. Okay, I'll need some practice, but you get the idea. It works. Now, optimally, I'd use these right now. I'd, I'd take these, and I'd take my new propane burner, and I'd fire it up and melt a giant pile of uh, scrap that I have. But I can't, because it's starting to sprinkle, and the weatherman said the rain was going to wait until midnight, but he's apparently an idiot, because it's starting now. So, you know, wah, wah, no melting today. Yeah.